welcome to another video lecture so i hope all of you have watched the previous lecture even if you didn't watch please go and watch so today we will discuss about the continuation of the last topic cons consistent deformation method consistent deformation method so i already we discussed about the how to analyze the truss already we discussed right now we are going to discuss about how to analyze beams and frames so first we go to the beams and after that beams are also of different types continuous beams fixed beams etc okay so before going to that b there are two methods of analysis of indeterminate stresses the first one is force method and second one is displacement method right now we are only focusing on force method since the force method one one solution or one of the solution to solve is consistent deformation in force method and the second one is displacement method slope differential moment distribution these all things as you will study in your later semesters upcoming semesters so force method as the term indicates we have to analyze some unknown forces or redundant numbers so that is the basic difference between this force method and displacement method we have to analyze using the force method or you have to determine those unknown forces in the members if the case of beams we have to find out the bending moment diagram shear force diagram by ways that is our a so please write down this question determine the reaction components for the property can be given subjected to union as shown in figure and this is the figure please draw the sketch so in the question it is given that we are given a cantilever beam and at the end a roller support so we can call this beam as a propped cantilever so what is our first step our question is to determine the reaction components reaction components means what we are to determine how many reactions over this fixed length one vertical one horizontal and one moment is there in the case of r point b you can find out that only one reaction component so our aim is to determine what are the values for that reaction components so before going to that how many number of redundant members are in this question so number of reactions here 3 3 plus 1 4 so 4 minus 3 equals 1 so either you can consider here is one moment is here so if you take that moment as redundant then this becomes a simply supported beam that is one of the possibility second possibility is that you have to remove this b portion you have to remove this b so it will become a cantilever beam okay the terms are clear i hope so in this case we will consider this very easy to consider if we take this b as our redundant member then it will be very easy to consider it as a cantilever beam okay then what is the step so only one cantilever beam is right now this what is our next step or what is the next procedure here we are going to use the moment area method m by pi diagram already we discussed in mois already we discussed about this m by ei diagram in some test books there is a uh, some other methods are going to be used the name is conjugate beam method don't be confused with these terms okay you can either use m by ei diagram or conjugate beam method okay so so what is our first step here we removed already this b portion so only we will get a cantilever beam with a union okay 
So, if a cantilever beam with the unit is acting, what is the bending moment diagram? What is the bending moment diagram? Or what is the value of value at the fixed end? How this WL square by 2E takes at the end? Please look at here. This is your cantilever beam. Take a section here. And what is the value? Already we discussed these things. Is what is the value? Is minus W into X into X by 2. So when X becomes L, it is going to be minus W L square by 2. If you are going to consider M by EI diagram, then it will become W L square by 2 EI. W L square by 2 A. The graph looks like a what is the shape of the graph? It will be a parabolic shape. It will be a parabolic shape. So we have to identify or calculate the deflection at B due to this UDL. Due to this UDL, what is the deflection at point B? What is the deflection at point B? So, you have to take the AD of this diagram and then multiply it with the center of gravity. So, AD of this parabola is 1 by 3 into W square by 2 EA into L. That is the area. Center of gravity to this point B point is 3 by 4 into L. So, find one is W L raised to 4 by 8 EA. Okay. So that is one value or what that is the deflection at B due to the UDL. Then second stage you have to find out what remove all those UDL and apply this RB. RB means what? The redundant number to this figure. RB. You have to apply RB. Then what is the bending moment diagram? So you will get RV into L, RV into L. So the so the value of area will be R, half RV into L into L. This is the value into center of gravity multiplied by center of gravity. So the value is RV L cube by three L. Actually, this UDL will deflect downwards and Redundant member will give upward deflection. So you have to equate that one and two equations. So finally you will get RB equals 3 by 8 into WL. And RA equals WL minus 3 by 8 into WL equals 5 by 8 into WL. And the moment about A point equals this is the value. And finally you have to draw if it is asked for the question. Draw the subject and the BMP also. So this is the case for a B. Beam section, beam cross section, or beam, an isosceles beam. The same procedure is repeated in every problems. And this is one of the way you can solve the problem. Either you can choose unit load method also to solve the problem. You have to find out the deflection, the point using unit load method, then calculate the redundant number also. That is also a possible choice. So I hope this is also clear for you. Please, if if you didn't catch at the at the right or first presentation, please go back and watch once more. Then hopefully you will get the concept. And please do it. Okay, thank you.